Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going over some important notes before getting started with the neural ne network which carries an art book. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is commenting. The pound sign or a hashtag or whatever you call it is how you write a comment. The comments are not interpreted by an art. They are simply for your documentation. This is a comment. That will do nothing as it should. Or if you do uh, the pound sign or hashtag symbol in front of your code, it will not work. Because it's not being interpreted as code, it's being interpreted as text. So, as we go through the book, if I have a, a pound sign in front of text, I know that it's not code, but a comment. And sometimes in the book, do the formatting issue that I probably should have done better, but it's my first book, so, yeah. It's something I need to work on. The, the comment will go on to the next line, but they're still written in orange, and they are, in fact, a comment. So, to, to, to be aware of that. But as we go through, there will be a, a bunch of functions we use that are in the in base R. So, if you need more information about the arguments of a function or what a function does, you can use the help function, which is not help. And the parentheses and type in the name of the function you need help with. So, when you do that, you need to type in the name itself. So, that will return help right here. And, the, and you'll get actual help like this. You may be tempted to write it like a function, like that. And it's not going to like that one bit. You'll just get an error. You can also... You with a less preferred method, in my opinion, but actually, it really doesn't matter. It's not my preference. There's nothing wrong with doing this. You can do, I do it with different one hit. You can do a question mark in the name of the function, and it will do the same thing. So, if you have questions about what a function does or the argument to the function, I would do this quite frequently. This is always helpful. It gives the values you have to give the function, and it gives you the default values of the function. Okay? And related to that, as we go through, I may not always specify the argument to a function. In fact, I didn't do this in the last video. What I didn't tell you is that when I type 10 into R norm, I'm, I'm putting in the value of n, the only argument that doesn't have a default. So this will run, and this will not. It will get mad at me. Likewise, there's also an implied order. The R norm function always has n first, and then mean an then standard deviation. Oh. So if I do this, I I know what this does, but you would not just by looking at it. I'm saying generate 10 values from the normal distribution with mean 1 and standard deviation 2. And really, that's not what I should have done to you. I should have said n equals 10, mean equals 1, and then the deviation equals 2. With that said, other people are probably not going to be that nice, and it's important to know that you don't have to name the argument in an R function. You just have to know the order of the argument if you don't do that. And it's also risky if you don't name your argument. There's no ambiguity here. I know the mean has to be 1, could I set mean equal to 1? And I can actually change the order of the 
it's not a useful thing, but I can, I can go ahead and say, D equal two, and it won't get mad at me because I named my argument. Okay. So if I at any point in the book don't name my argument, you may want to use the help function to figure out what what argument I am specifying. If there's no equal sign in the help documentation. That is a required argument. If there is an equal sign, that is saying that the value right here is the default argument. Okay? So, I hopefully am good about it, but if I'm not, that's just something to know. Okay? So, in the next video, I will be talking about Creating and assigning variable. And that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.